Hello there, this is the Song System. Welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome back, hopefully. We are here once again with our pedal board and a couple of contrabass clarinet samples already in the boomerang looper. And what we've got today are three phrases from an arrangement that we're working on of My Funny Valentine, uh, suggested by a friend when they heard uh, the last improvisation that we did, uh, that we ended up titling Almost a Valentine or something to that effect. But uh, we're actually working on the tune now. But the main component that I want to work on today is the fuzz sound. Now, what we've been using at the moment, uh, for, for the time being, has been a, a pretty much a closed gate compression at like one-ish drive, more like two, and stability more like two. Um, but uh, we just want to have a little bit of a play around and see see what we've we've got, um, what what other things we can come up with. So what we have are, is the boomerang going into the um, signal blender, the Albany sing signal blender, which is hooked up with the Zvex um, fuzz factory so that we can actually blend it with the, the, the um, dry signal. Then we've got, we've got that going into the Boss GE7 equalizer because we, we want to play around with a little bit of equalization uh, as well later, see, see what effects we can have. So first off though, um, let's have a little listen to the samples. Um, oh, also I should mention that after the equalizer we do have the dark world as well, although we may or may not get around to that. Another thing I would like to try is the fuzz after the reverb, um, but we will see what we have time for today. <laughs> so uh, our first phrase is the first um, four measures of the uh, of the song. repeat there. Then this is the first uh, two bars from the bridge. And then back to the top. There we go. And uh, this last one is um, towards the end of the song and it includes the lowest note, the low D on the contra, and the highest note, the high F of the song. So. Those are our three basic loops, and um, they reflect um, different registers of the instrument, uh, different kind of um, harmonic rhythms. So that's one of the reasons that we've got three going there. Uh, we may use all of them. I want to start with just the first one though. And here's the basic fuzz sound that we've been using. Uh, this is without any dry signal in, and using the first, the first little sample for now. And now with the the dry And 
there we go. And uh, I switched the, the dwell, the length of the reverb, up to about three o'clock there. I like it a little bit longer, more like a, the sustain of a, gu a guitar string is kind of what we're going for. I am realizing that uh, at the moment, inspired by a lot of um, ambient metal music or drone metal um, and guitar music, Dylan Car Carlson, um, Earth, um, and um, Sun O, um, however that name is meant to be said. <laughs> um, I'm wanting these long ambient sounds that I can use to play songs, but I can also use for ambient improvisations or, or um, uh, soundscapes. So uh, that's the basic idea of what we're going to be doing. I should add that what we've got here is the uh, in the signal blender we've got the um, uh, dry signal at um, unity um, and we've got and that's at like one ish two ish on the signal blender um, and we've got it at 12 for the for the fuzz so we can actually add more fuzz quite easily there so the basic thing that we were doing when we started with uh, working with the this fuzz was to make sure that we had a sound that didn't have any static in it because the fuzz factory loves to make static <laughs> and understandably so so the main problem is it's like something like let's make sure everything's good here the gate if the gate is open um, if the gate is counterclockwise more than um, like four o'clock then we start to get that hiss um, compression doesn't seem to give anything in and of itself although I believe that that's partly a function of uh, it like it's it's a complex relationship with the um, uh, with the drive maybe but um, drive gives us some hiss from about like five o'clock ish and stability doesn't seem to present any problems as is although again that's also related to the to the drive but we even with drive up full stability um, stability kind of brings the uh, the hiss out. So basically, as drive goes up, stability can help tame that that um, static. So, like if we put drive down, uh, stability has nothing to uh, nothing to tame there. If that makes sense. Uh, compression so I've got drive and stability all the way up there compression seems to act as a, a thing on them uh, an influence on them as well so that's the thing about the, the fuzz factory is it's such a complex thing and, and I've heard guitarists describe it as like a a battle between the guitar <laughs> and the pedal <laughs> but um, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna given that the drive seems to be key here we've got the stability all the way up we've got compression at noon and we're gonna bring drive down to the point where it doesn't hiss so um, uh, so basically that seems like the the most intense that we can we can get it uh, the, the closest to to a buzz in other words it's the wildest it can go without producing hiss now compression If I bring the compression to um, three o'clock, 
Okay, yeah, this seems to be like the wildest it will go. Compression is at like, drive is all the way up, stability is all the way up, compression is at three o'clock. Okay, now gate, <laughs> we can add a smidge of gate there by bringing it counterclockwise, but um, I think that the others need to be brought down before the gate can be um, tamed at all. So let's just hear how that sounds with that at like maximum wildness. <laughs> So that makes sense. The compression, because it's up quite high, it requires uh, a lot of volume for it, for there to be any effect produced by the pedal. So let's try bringing compression counterclockwise a little bit. And it, you can hear how it's a bit more responsive there. But now we've got that hiss. So starting from compression, um, we, um, in terms of how much things need to be brought down um, uh, in order for there not to be a, 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 a hiss, that what we just heard is the basic kind of um, kind of uh, sound we can expect. Now, if we want more responsiveness, in other words, if we want the compression brought counterclockwise more, we're going to have to adjust the others. So, um, let's see what we want from compression. Maybe that's the thing, uh, just thinking about how to handle the fuzz factory for my particular needs. Maybe that compression is, is the starting place in terms of um, uh, how robotic, how responsive is perhaps the best word I want this fuzz to be. Yeah, it doesn't give us much. Yeah, that's nice, but it is it is <clears throat> much closer to the natural clarinet sound. And seen as we're happy with, seen as we're happy with blending in some some wet signal. Oh, hold on, that's had the wet signal in it. Excuse me. So that's at noon. I quite like that, as it was before, I think. Let's bring it down a bit. Nine o'clock. I mean that's not unpleasant. I I brought compression all the way all the way counterclockwise.
Oh, there's a lot of high end there. Okay. We want to tame some of that high end, make it a little bit less harsh. Um, okay, I've got that look like 11. I quite like that. Okay, let's bring the drive down to the point where there's no hiss. Okay, that didn't take much. That's at, at just after 5 now. There we go. I really like that that grittiness. Let's bring it a little bit more counterclockwise. Now, uh, in terms of stability, let's see how that affects things. Oh, this is a more interesting route, I think. So, I put drive all the way back up. Let's see how much we need to bring stability down to get rid of that hiss. Now stability needs to be brought down a lot more to get rid of the hiss. I'm, I'm back at like 10 o'clock here. To get rid of it completely it has to be at 9, but let's leave it at 10. Let's see how that sounds. Now, there's something I like a lot about that. It's very chunky and... and uh, back to that kind of robotic kind of feel. I like the spittiness of the attack, um, but it is a li it, it's an effect, but it's not what I want. So... Okay, that's at noon, uh, sorry, like one o'clock now. Let's bring the drive down to the point where it loses the hiss. So that's just back again, that's now at like five o'clock. Yeah, I like, I like that, um, and I'm starting to get a bit of a feel for how these things interact with each other. Like compression, when it was completely uh, counterclockwise, we were getting a lot of high overtones. So obviously, compression takes away the volume at the highs and the lows. Um, pretty obvious there. Um, then playing with drive and stability to, to find a compromise that we like. So what we did there was we set stability to, uh, to somewhere that we liked and then adjusted drive. Let's try the opposite now. Um, setting drive to somewhere where we like it, then adjusting stability. See, I like a bit more drive. I like that push. Yeah. But that's actually backing drive off. Backing drive all the way off. Hmm. It's very spitty and loose. Okay, so drive as it suggests. 
forces more through them. And I do like that. But, let's see. That is nice. That's at like one o'clock. Okay, and we don't seem to be getting any hiss, and that's with stability all the way down. So, all the way up, I should say. Well, here we go. Uh, I think I think we found something that we like here. Compression at 11, drive at 1, and stability all the way uh, clockwise. Now, gate is still giving us a lot of hiss, even when it's slightly counterclock, slightly clockwise. Let's see what the difference is before we get some some hiss. I like that. This is with gate completely clockwise. That's with it a little bit counterclockwise. I like that. It's like I tend to think of gate as attack. Um, and I know compression is not quite um, sustain, um, but but it, it, it affects the um, it affects the energy of the note. Uh, I mean, I know it's volume, but but like the, um, the the momentum of it by compressing it. So gate, I think of as almost like a um, an uh, 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 an envelope at the beginning of something, and then compression uh, as an envelope on the body of the note. Um, now stability, we can basically do with what we want at this point. It seems to be fine with us going anywhere, so let's play with that a little bit. Yeah, I stability to me seems almost like a filter, and I can understand how like you know, push push the drive against that. Ooh, and you get that nice fuzzy core. That's really nice. I like that a lot. But I also like the way we had it just now. Okay, so we've got gate at uh, four-ish, um, just so that it doesn't hiss. Compression we've got at one, uh, I'm sorry, 11. Drive is at one. Stability we've got at, um, what's that, two. So let's try the other two sounds, samples, I should say. Yeah, I like what that does to the low notes. Uh, I like the way that it sounds on the higher notes. Let's try that last phrase. I mean, that low D is very squashed. Just about recognizable though. I'm I'm happy with that. 
but what I would like to try now is the three samples with the dry signal in there as well and this is the same ratio as before where um, the dry signal is at uh, is at unity and then um, the fuzz is at 12 <laughs> like the way that the fuzz adds an edge to the roundness of the acoustic sound there. Same thing there, I like the evenness uh, on the different registers. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, I, I think I mentioned it in a previous video, I don't want a fuzz pedal where I can't blend in the, 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 the dry signal. Um, and that is the big advantage, disadvantage, I, sh I should say, with the Fuzz Factory for me. Um, I mean, it's it's okay having it hooked up through the Signal Blender, but um, the other thing that I've been looking at are Fuzz pedals with the built-in EQ, and I think that's maybe the place to go next. Um, I was playing with this a little bit before, and um, yeah, Using EQ with fuzz is, I believe, a standard practice for guitarists, at least by and large. Uh, a lot of the pedals these days will have some kind of um, mid-boost, which I believe is associated, mid-boost or mid-cut, which is, uh, I believe, associated with um, the big muffs. But, um, uh, yeah, there are many things that can be done, and that's what I want to have a, a brief dip into here. So, um, Got the GE7 on now, and everything is um, in the middle. So. <laughs> to 400 hertz I've got the first three toggles kind of um, scooped scooping downwards <laughs> This particular um, uh, equalizer, uh, the lowest notes on the contrabass are uh, around the 40 hertz mark, and this one only goes only goes down to 100. So um, let's hear that lowest note, highest notes and lowest notes. <laughs> like a stark difference when it goes up to the middle register. Um, I think I would rather be a little bit more subtle with this. Let's let's do a little bit of that whole mid scooping kind of thing. Mm. 
Yeah, it kind of neuters it a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna crank up the ah. Yeah, this is like the presence and the brilliance really jacked up. Let's see how that goes with some reverb. reverb on its own yeah let's try the um the higher notes It makes it a bit flat sounding to me um, to have the higher stuff emphasized quite that much. Uh, this is natural again. So you get a lot of the, the, the spittiness and crackliness. I mean, that might be a nice effect sometime. But um, let's try more of like a the, the top three knobs in more of like, top three sliders in more of like a, um, a V shape. Still getting that that squeakiness. Yeah, even just a little bit of change then. So how about if we bring the low end up as well as? Let's see how that sounds with some reverb, three samples. so we get as much of the uh, as much resonance as possible in the reverb I may bring that down and I've got the um, the length of the reverb what they call the dwell on this plate reverb um, at just after three <laughs> I do 
feel that perhaps some of that high-end exaggeration from the equalizer is getting a little bit a little bit too buzzy we're also getting some I think it's maybe from the reverb we're getting some line noise let's try that with a little bit of a darker reverb <laughs> I could probably bring the length down a little bit as well, <laughs> just a smidge. Um, I am liking the way that that affects some of the key sounds, like the way it's picking up some of the key sounds. Let's try that last sample. is <laughs> I also like the way that the fuzz is producing almost like a, a synth line that's copying or, or tracking the um, uh, the contrabass sound like the the wet sound sorry the dry sound there um, I'm very interested to see what what a complete version of the song would sound like with this particular voice so um, yeah that um, that has been a, a, an interesting exploration. I feel like I'm getting to know the Zvex a bit better at the Fuzz Factory. Um, I'm starting to get a, a handle on the on how I can use EQ a little bit more effectively, um, and getting an idea of how beneficial it would be to have a, a fuzz pedal with an EQ built into it. Um, that reverb, I can't decide if I prefer it brighter or darker. Um, so let's do that. Let's just have one more listen through, and I'll do each track twice. But I'll change the um, uh, I'll change the the texture. Sorry, the the um, lightness, darkness of the of the um, tone. <laughs> second sample. I know that wasn't twice through, but... darker it seems to give more definition to the trails and I like that 
Um, but I also do like the expansiveness of, of, of the lighter tone. Let's find a midpoint. Let's, um, we'll do that same sample one more time. <laughs> I started with it dark, took it down, uh, and found a nice spot around uh, two o'clock there. Then did it bright and moved it back down, and, and that two o'clock position seems to be good. Let's try that last sample. <laughs> Happy with how that sounds on in those in those extremes. Yeah. And with it at this length, the length is around three o'clock. I think that's going to encourage me to play it less densely. Now, the previous song that I did, um, uh, "Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow." is a very open song and so it'll be very interesting to see how this goes with Funny Valentine. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> One more thing was the idea of putting fuzz after reverb. So uh, very quickly, let's see what happens if we do that. So we want five to go at the end there. Five after four, okay. Okay. Okay, so we've done that now. Let's see. <laughs> is with the fuzz that is a mixture of dry and wet signals um, let's hear that completely completely uh, fuzzed up <laughs> I love the way that that dies. That's just lovely. Um, I really like that. It's not what I want for this song, but that is definitely something to be bearing in mind for future. Let's just bring the dr the uh, dry signal back in, and um, we will um, we will see how the two other guys sound. The two other samples. <laughs> It's definitely something that we can use as an effect. I think that it would require some messing around with the fuzz factory, which I'm not really willing to do right now. And that final one. Yeah. 
the other thing is, is that the way things are set up now, I realize the EQ will be affecting the the clarinet sound, the, the, the dry clarinet sound. So I'm taking the EQ out. Yeah, I, it's definitely a, a, a preferable sound. at least some dry signal in there. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that effect a lot. The idea of using fuzz on a reverb um, I think is perhaps one way of getting a little bit closer to what guitarists um, get to experience with the, the lovely um, sustained chords that they can hold uh, to get those lovely fuzzy textures on top of them. But let's leave it at that for now. Um, that's been a really good fun experiment and uh, thank you for joining me for it. I hope that's been <laughs> interesting for you. It's certainly been fun for me and uh, please join us again sometime. Thank you very much.